Now, in computing, in particular, in programming, there are a lot of concepts. But today, what I'm going to share with you is one of the more abstract of concepts. This one is called abstraction. Yeah, I just made that terrible pun. I think I'm done for the day. Yep. Anyway, yes, let's talk about abstraction as a computing concept. More on this after the break. This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. Hello and welcome back to yet another random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Today, we're going to look at a concept that more closely relates to programming. That is the concept of abstraction. Now, normally when we do things, it doesn't have to be in computing, just in general, we want to know as much as possible. However, when it comes to designing or creating something on a much bigger scale, like writing a program in a team, it's normally less conducive to know every single thing that is going on. Of course, it is not possible, it is not practical, it's probably too time consuming. There's just no good reason why you should be doing that. And that's why when we work in projects at a certain level, we start trying to apply the concept of abstraction. Now, when they first teach this in school, many students get really confused. Why is it that we are suddenly just choosing to cut out certain pieces of our knowledge? What, what's going on? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start from the ground up. I'm going to try and explain abstraction, uh, the reason why we need abstraction, as well as, of course, the benefits of knowing the concept. You see, the concept of abstraction is to actually know as little as possible. In fact, all you know are the things that are actually important to you. Imagine now a very large scale program. This program has a lot of different modules that all communicate with each other in a certain way. The easiest way to incorporate the concepts of abstraction is to have each of these modules have an API. API stands for an Application Programming Interface. At its simplest, the API of a module simply defines what functions are available, what input they take, and what output they produce. You don't actually need to know what this module is actually doing. All you need to know is when I actually call this function coming from the module, something will happen and I will get a certain result. I don't actually have to care what this module is doing to bring about that effect. All I need to know is that effect will happen. When you actually make use of this modular kind of structure that, of course, works with an API properly, you actually create two types of abstraction, control abstraction and data abstraction. Simply put, control abstraction is exactly what I mentioned earlier. That is, you don't care how a certain thing is done. You just know that it gets done and you get a certain result. Data abstraction is kind of like the other side of that. In order for that particular module to do certain things, it probably also needs to maintain certain pieces of data and manipulate that data as necessary. Data abstraction means you don't care what data it's holding or how it's manipulating that particular piece of data. So I guess at this point you'll be wondering, okay, I know what abstraction means, I know, you know the concept of abstraction, but how is it applicable? Just think about this. In our huge program with all the different modules, if the only relation between the different modules are based on the API, like I mentioned earlier, what this means is essentially all the modules can be modified independently of each other. As long as the API doesn't change, modifying one module will not affect anything else in a program. That is one cool thing about abstraction. But then maybe you're not a programmer, so you are bought to all hell by this discussion. You might be wondering, is there any real life applications of abstraction? And in fact, there are. In fact, there are many. Just take for example your washing machine. You know that when you press a certain button, something will happen. I press this button, the tub fills up. I press this button, it starts spinning. I don't think there's a button for that, is there? Anyway, whatever it is, you know that the buttons work in a certain way. But you don't know how they are implemented. You don't know what the wiring is like back there. You don't know what kind of boards they have. You don't know what kind of chips they have. You don't know what is actually going on in the background. So really, all the knowledge you have about this system is like what an API gives you. I know that when I give this input, I'll get that output without knowing any more details about the background process. And really, even for programmers, this applies. You might think that when I'm writing a program, I want to know everything about it. But the truth is, you cannot know everything about it. Even an operation as simple as 1 plus 1 actually requires a lot of work in the background. 
a lot of work that you don't see. For example, when you do one plus one, a lot of things actually fire off at a component and gate level. You know, one needs to be loaded into a register, it might need to be converted to a different form, and then the arithmetic needs to happen. The result is either loaded into memory or loaded into a different register, and then read back to you somehow. And that is not even the lowest level of abstraction. We are thinking about things at, you know, logic gates and different components, you know, registers, things like that. But if we were to go even lower, we are actually looking at electric currents moving around on a board. So that's an even lower level look at the whole idea. What I'm trying to say is, abstraction is actually in every part of our lives. It happens really everywhere. So when you're writing a program, you can actually apply the same kind of thinking. That is, to only know what is the most important to what you're doing. When you actually get more comfortable with this concept, what you can do is you can start writing code that is abstract and easy to read. Now, take a look at this chunk of pseudo code. Honestly, it's not very difficult to understand. You cannot possibly understand what it means at one glance, but if you were to read through the lines and see what's going on, maybe trace the loop with your eyes, then yeah, you know what's going on. You can guess what the output is. But the thing is, we can do better. We can do what is known as extract method refactoring, and this actually makes things a lot more abstract. When you look at the main procedure now, notice how it's basically been shrunk to just a couple of lines. And at a glance, it's immediately easy to understand what's happening in this function. In fact, what we're doing here is also abstraction. By looking at the main procedure, you don't know what's actually happening in the background. However, just with one glance at this procedure, you know what's happening. You know what it's trying to do, and you know what kind of effects it will achieve. You just don't know how these things are done. If you want to find out more about the individual functions, then you'll scroll through the actual abstracted procedure to find out how these steps are done. And there you go, that pretty much wraps it up for this episode. Abstraction is one of the higher level concepts that you'll encounter when you're doing slightly larger scale projects. It's definitely a requirement when it comes to a more professional kind of context. If you're a coder, you might even be able to apply this, and I hope you do because it is something that is, you know, more required at a professional level. Once again, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you have any comments, queries, or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612 TV. As always, I appreciate every like, favorite, and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV.